Well, it was a process. I mean, we went through all the different categories. We got a sense of what the issues are, what we wanted to honor, and eventually came up with this project as the one most representative of a large collaboration that deals with the environment and is a long-term project. And this is basically what became the most interesting for us for our topic of hybrid arts. Yeah, I think it has to do a lot also with uh, the interaction between different species, the limits of uh, technical prowess, the very positioning of the human being in its technologically designed and polluted environment, and to think of also transspecies technological capacities in order to clean up human's mess. So on the one hand, I think there was an ecological concern, there was a technological concern, but to reshift these questions also to kind of post-anthropocentric reasoning, to say that, well, <laughs> where are we as now as humans and how do we deal with the necessity of a degree of humility that very much of the technologically based art in the last years have been lacking. That's right. And moving a little bit away from synthetic biology to actually honoring the way the earth works anyway and working with it and understanding that we're just a small percentage of it. Not against it. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> or trying to invent something new uh, rather to go back into working with it. Actually not. I mean, I feel like I've always resided in that position. That's probably why I was invited to this category. Uh, and to me, it's a place in between. It's in between arts and sciences. It's in between many different categories. And that place is the best place to be because it's not defined. The moment it becomes defined, it's not hybrid anymore. And so we agreed as a group for this, to just think about it as something that we don't necessarily define. It'll define itself with who applied. So even though we try to represent different disciplines, in the end we surrendered to what came to us because that is hybrid at this moment and next year it will probably be very different. Mm -hmm. The, the very notion of the hybrid um, implies that as a biological metaphor you would expect that there would be something like a hybrid vigor, so to say that you would improve something in comparison to what is normally being addressed as a, a kind of purebred. But after years of cycles of hybridity, of course, you come up with also kind of new um, uh, new probiots such as bio art, a kind of unlucky category in which people are just considering that if you deal with any kind of biological material and you manipulate it, you end up in a kind of new category. So I think what we are looking at is really this kind of in-betweenness and also we are really uh, moving uh, towards uh, non-targetable objects, moving objects, aesthetic objects, and with this uh, in-betweenness also triggers uh, a kind of reflection how society defines its disciplines. We are living in a totally over-specialized society and I think one of the main aim of this uh, connections that are being built in the hybrid art category is precisely to bring fields of knowledge, fields of aesthetic expertise together which normally do not really talk to each other. Well again, I mean the trend would be temporary and keep moving. It's a moving target and what we received is a lot of works that actually dealt with living matter and a lot of collaboration, a lot of works that uh, deal with a lot of big data and collaborations between art and science that are actually equal rather than an artist coming to a scientist asking for something or the other way around. And this became very interesting to us to see where it overlaps in a way that it becomes truly a hybrid where the artist informs the scientist and vice versa.
Uh, it happened in the last years as well. I mean, since the inception of the very category of hybrid art, we could see clear trends of something which is just on the radar of artists. So we had years when it was clearly about data visualization, mm -hmm. then there was two or three years of geolocalization art, then there was two years of Twitter art. But we never really picked in these years of the existence of the category these trends literally. And I think what is still around a lot is the occupation with measurement, mm -hmm. with data, what do we do with this data, how mm -hmm. this data is being gathered. But also there is a kind of trend towards uh, uh, smell, mm -hmm. taste, sensory mm -hmm. experiences, the biological world, how we match the technological implications with the biological surroundings, mm -hmm. our own phenomenology. And I think where maybe a trend has come through when it came to the choice of the actual awarded pieces is that we look at yeah, post-anthropocentric arts about human kinds questioning of himself mm -hmm. as a creative of technology and being also starting to suffer from the very same technologies. So there's a kind of look looking towards trans-species relationships, ecologically uh, relevant questions, responsibility that hook up hard, wet, soft technologies all together. We actually agreed. There was one project that was my favorite that nobody else agreed with me, actually, I think. <laughs> or, or they were all on the sidelines with it. Um, but when we all came together, we actually agreed that there was a thematic there in the sense of location where this works comes from. So we're talking about Japan and Mexico and Germany, so three continents. Um, there's a woman in there, so it's not just three white guys, and we thought that was important. Every project was actually a large collaboration, so it didn't feel like an artist genius that was in touch. And when we saw this as the coloring rather than the project itself, everybody was actually okay with it because it's a larger picture. It's not just about the project. And it's uh, our sense that we're also giving a message and the message is encouraging other work like that. So we're encouraging work that's large cross-disciplinary, long-term work, real commitment, and that goes back to the basics, to Earth, and doesn't look at data as just numbers, but data that you can taste and just become part of. Yeah, I don't think that everybody really came with a clear favorite to this competition. No. I mean, there's so much, there are 600 artworks in there, and what you want to do if you, want, if you come to this kind of jury is to be surprised. I mean, I think we are not here to defend a specific right. aesthetic or a specific artwork. I mean, the main objective is to be surprised and to learn something from this and to pick these tendencies which say something about our time. But I think the actual choice that was made uh, represented in a very you know, complex and distributed way the arguments that have been picked through the discussion of all the artworks together and it condensed in a certain way a lot of the concerns that have been discussed also when approaching mm -hmm. the other artworks. Is it, I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that in the jury there's we finished the jury process five minutes before the deliberation. That means that there were, we were really strikingly uh, embedded in the process uh, to until the last minute to find really what this means and how it works as also as a, as a sign for the next years That's and right. what it means to other artists who want to submit to this category. Because in a way, I think that the hybrid category of all is the one that's evolving and it's really putting out a message. So we became more about the message that's being put out and what that responsibility is. Uh, and it's all worked out exactly like it's supposed to. Right? Yeah, I think in the, in the last round, I mean, we had... A, We're a bit tired. <laughs> we had a whole a, a, a huge uh, density of artworks which were very close to getting a distinction, the Golden Nika. They are very closely together, but they are very, they were dif dealing with different concerns. So, 
it, it could have been the other way around if we would just have focused less on ecological concerns okay. and maybe looking more at data gathering also on our social concerns. But uh, throughout the whole competition, it seemed to us that this um, questioning of what human technology as such means to, uh, was probably uh, giving the favor to Gilberto Esparza's pieces because it was really embedding the actual consequences and possible solutions to what we do to our environment.